we've already programmed the NXT motors. That's what they look like. These have a built-in encoder, and to get them to move a, an exact distance, we have to do a little bit of math. We've found the diameter of the wheel, found the circumference of that wheel, and divided that into the number of inches we wanted to go, and then we set up the encoder. And we were able to get the robot to drive a precise distance, in this case, 12 inches. Tetrix motors don't have built-in encoders, so you need to get one, assemble it, and attach it to the motors. They come with instructions for assembly. There is an encoder cable that needs to match, so motor 1 needs to be also plugged into encoder 1. Fortunately, the code for using the shaft encoders to go a precise distance is very similar to the NXT motors. First, we need to make sure, though, that we set up our motors and our controllers. So in this motors and sensors setup, go to external controllers, and if you're using standard Tetrix configuration, that's fine. Otherwise, you can set up a custom one. Mine, I'm plugged into sensor port one. I have a motor controller and then a servo controller daisy chain to it. Now that I have my setup configured, I can go to Motors. I'm not using any NXT motors, so I'm going to disable those. And make sure you have your Tetrix motors uh, set up, and then give them good names. So I'm driving. I got a left motor and a right motor. And one of them needs to be reversed because they're facing opposite directions. And because I've installed encoders, now I can check those boxes. Alright, so we're done with that. We can see at the top of our program, it's configured our motors and given them names. So we can use them in our program. Alright, first thing, the wheels on my Tetrix robot are a different size, so I need to change the diameter to the new diameter of the wheels. Measured those there 2 and 7 eighths, which is equal to that decimal. The next line of code determines the circumference of that wheel by multiplying the diameter of the wheel times pi. Then the third line says distance to go. Let's have it drive 12 inches. And now, here comes an important part, to find the number of rotations that that wheel needs to spin to go that distance, we need to divide the distance by the circumference. That'll give us the number of rotations. Then, rotations times 360 tells us the number of degrees. And finally, we have to add something that we didn't have before, encoder counts. The shaft encoder is quarters of a degree, not a whole degree. So to find the number of encoder counts, we have to multiply the number of degrees by 4. There are 4 encoder counts in each degree. So if we want to move a certain number of encoder counts, we have to change the number of degrees to encoder counts by multiplying the degrees by 4. You can see that we're referring to motors B and C. We're not using those motors, so we need to make sure that we replace those with the correct names. So robot C will give the instructions to the correct motors. Next lines, we're using the encoder targets. That's where we want them to go. We figured those encoder counts out, so we need to make sure that we give for the Tetrix motors the encoder counts, not the degrees. If you forget, you can always go back and look at the documentation, the help files. Also, change the names of the motors here as well. We're using left motor and right motor that we set up in the motors and sensors setup. Usually, I'm not having my motors drive at 100%. I usually slow them down so that my robot can be more accurate. So I'm going to drive this robot at 50%. 
The next part is the while loop. This is where we're waiting for the motors to finish running to that target. So we're doing nothing. We're just sitting here in this loop spinning, waiting and waiting until the motors are idling and finished. When they're finished, we can turn the motor powers off. All right, so I've set out a tape measure. Let's try this out. The robot should drive one foot. You can see that it does go a foot. 